insurance. That wasn't even that was that's a, a good that wasn't a consideration. Right that's a good section to sit in, though. You know, it's yeah. nice. No, it's a, it's a good view from there. <laughs> I mean, you could drink after the game. You know, true. No, true. No, true. No, no, true. No, 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 the <laughs>
Market value, what'd you say? What the car was worth, what it worth. Okay, so what the car was worth, that's market value. Mm -hmm. How do you prove that? Kelly, yeah. Kelly Blue Book. So the Kelly Blue Book is what it, and, and by the way, so I can just grab my little blue book, open up, say, here you go. I mean, is that, is that, how many of you have had evidence? And how, how many of you had evidence so far? Just everyone, but stop it, you haven't had it yet? I haven't either. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, so two. Well, for those, so that you guys are excused from the next question with the rest of the month. Um, this, this, you said Kelly, you said Kelly Blue Book. Well, well, that's hearsay, isn't it? Yes, no, that's not the manual, isn't it? We have to go. Oh, my God. Okay. I didn't remember him in our class. No, I wasn't. Okay, so. <laughs> it, it's hearsay, isn't it? So it is hearsay. So tell me how you're going to prove the value, of, even assuming that, well, by the way, what is you? Because I mean, we do that, right? Kelly Blue, KBB.com. What is that? Well, who said? I mean, what? Where? Why do we accept that that's market value? Because this is what I heard: market value and what it's worth. Why do we assume that? Because someone put it in a book. Whose book is that? Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and not a good Kelly. <laughs> so, who, who's, whose book is that? Dealer's book. The dealer's book. So the deal is probably representing an accurate price, market value price for your vehicle, you figure, because that's, that's the guy who's going to be buying it back from you when you buy the new car, right? They've come up with new ones so, that are lower. What? They've come up with new ones that are lower. <laughs> <laughs> so, but wait a minute, though, right? Because in this, there's multiple values within that book, aren't there? Trade-in value, private. private party value, yeah. dealer value. So which is it? Even assuming I'll accept your Ke Kelly Blue Book as market value or what you lost, which one of those is it? Private seller, I would, I would say. Private seller, you don't get the deal? No, because they're going to market up anyway. Well, but Vash has to go out and buy a new car, so now you say he's got to find it from a private party? No warranty? No, because he's getting, like you just said, he's going to be put back in the position that he was but for Kelly's arson. So. So, so he has to go the, buy it from would, a private dealer. He should get back what he would get if he was to sell it on the market. What if he, did what if he didn't want to sell it but wanted to buy it? I mean, he's got to replace it, right? That's at least the theory here is well, now he's got to go out and get another one. So where's he supposed to get it from? Which, which number is the right market value? Even assuming that is any of these are appropriate for market value. So, so if your insurance company say, listen, we're going to give you Kelly Blue Book value, that, that is, that's it for you guys? Oh, okay, good, thanks. That's the depreciation of the car. Well, but doesn't the market value reflect your depreciation? Yeah, whether the car is on the mileage or the mileage. So, so, so Kelly Blue Book says your car was worth 5000 That's it? Because I went to the Globe and looked, and it says 7500 for basically the same car with roughly the same miles. What's, what's my number? And even assuming you've got your number, how do, how do you prove it? Okay, so you say, oh, well, listen, this is what it's worth. Says who? Receipts. So receipts of what? Receipts of hearsay, aren't they? Yes. So, because right, you're the lawyer now. Now you're introducing a case of some sort, I expect. A relatively simple case. Loss of a car, right? This is not, this is not a big antitrust case. This is, Kelly burned my car. I'm giving you liability. Prove me the value of your vehicle. So, how? Ah, because right, that really is what I want to know. Ah. I, would, I would think it would be what somebody else is willing to pay for that. So that's how we get the market value, what things are, are selling and buying at. So okay, how do you look at more than one source? How do you establish, how do you prove market value? That's something I'm asking you for, for a vehicle, for your motor vehicle. Which would buy itself. For Kelly, we would have an expert testimony. Okay. So we're going to get an expert. To change. It's nationally recognized. Too much money. Too much money. Would you understand? So it's nationally recognized as what? What's Kelly Blue Book nationally recognized as? A market report. Uh, is it? <coughs> Are you trying to make a market report so it'll fit one of your 803 exceptions yeah. over there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that true? Well, but there's several different ones that vary quite a bit in price. I mean, so, I, I buy and sell a lot of cars. And uh, I tend to average prices. I look at like NADA, Blue Book, 
uh, Edmunds.com. Edmunds. There's a lot of different ones that you can And, and the values get. are different. Very much so. And, and they're different depending pieces. on whether he's buying in North Andover or perhaps some other town. Yep. So how do you prove market value? That's, we're still back to the same question. You've got a relatively simple assignment. And I was, if I was a lawyer, I'd go in, go in um, Westlaw and look at case precedent and see how, how other cases in that court were handled given similar situations. What do you mean were handled? You guys do that to me a lot. Mm -hmm. You say, I'll figure out what the value is by going to look at what other cases settled for for the broken arm or the kneecap or whatever else, right? That's what you guys do to me a lot in various capacities. But isn't like someone's kneecap and uh, elbow, I grab my elbow, elbow and kneecap, isn't that sort of person specific and age and so. gender and what you do with it? So, so okay, so uh, I mean, is that what, do we have to do that? A 60 year old woman's broken elbow is worth X, so your 60 year old woman's elbow is worth X, but I mean, you better hope. I mean, is that how close we have to get, or is that 60 year old elbow worth about the same as that the kid who's 20 years old? No. no. Oh no, so, 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 and by the way, even if you know what it's worth, that doesn't mean you can prove what it's worth, right? Okay, I have an idea or a range, but seeing what other cases settle for or resolve for doesn't necessarily mean that's what your case is, is that you're gonna be able to prove. Because even if that's what it's worth, if you don't know, if you can't prove your damages, it's not worth anything, right? I think I can beat you because you're inept. I'm probably not going to offer you what you'd like. I, I may not offer you anything anyway. I might, right? I might call you bluff. Then, you think you can prove it? Go ahead. Because I'm not feeling terribly worried about this car case right now. Mm -hmm. well, that's why there's no fixed rule for measuring compensation or, or market value. That's a, nice, that's a very nice lawyerly answer. I still don't have your answer as to how you're going to prove it. Isn't it just produce enough evidence and that's a fact? What is that fact? evidence is what I'm asking. What's the evidence? He buys and sells a lot of cars. We're going to call an expert because that gets money. Or can we just ask him? Can you testify to the value of your own car? Do you know the value? Do, do you know the value of your own vehicle? None of you. You don't know what it would cost to replace that vehicle in all likelihood? Not much. No. Huh? Do you? You must at least, because you, you, right? Yeah, roughly. So does that, doesn't anyone else feel that way? That if I, so, so let, let me just let me ask you a serious question. Then. So your car gets totaled tomorrow. Oh God. The insurance company says we're going to give you X. That's the end of the dialogue. Thank you very much. Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> I mean, really, that's the way that works because because they said I said no, no, that's not good enough. That car's not, that car's worth more than that. Shall we prove that it's worth more than that? I will. I know, and that's what I'm asking you to do. Tell me what. Tell me what. But you do know that, right? You don't have to accept what they say. You can say no, and hope that some of your clients are now with you and say no. I'm not taking that, or we're just going to take the insurance company out of the equation. You need to prove the value of this loss. So you've got Kelly Blue Book which has its hearsay problems, has its valuation problems, because we know that there, are range, there are ranges within that book, much less ranges when we compare Nada and Edmonds. Peterson's, I think, has an online <coughs> pricing guide as well. And at one point, this was all secret. You, again, you guys are really kind of lucky you've got the internet, because at one point, you went into the dealer and he looked at his little yeah, you have, to, you have to know somebody to deal with. Can I look at you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. See the book. <laughs> but so you guys have it. You guys have it much better than when we had to walk to and from school with no no uh, shoes in the <laughs> snow. Uh, but but so tell me, I still don't know how you're going to prove the value of that vehicle. I'm going to do it the way I said it. I didn't hear you say it. Um, I didn't talk about arms and legs. I'm going to see if it, another case is used Blue Book or Nada. If, if it's you, what sources they're using for expert source that I can use that case is in that particular jurisdiction. Well, so, and what do you think that is? Whatever they use. You know, if they, I'm sure they, I'm sure they run into this as a common problem. I'm sure they do it all the time in cases. So 
So well, first of all, Gary, how are you going to afford Westlaw when you get out of high school? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's other sources. To look at cases, okay. so you just follow the cases. But I think you said Westlaw, though. That's yeah. what you said earlier. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's Google. There's Google. Uh, Westlaw West actually has some packages for uh, uh, lawyers that are relatively modest in prices. Like the junkie, they want to hook you in. <laughs> <laughs> so, why, why couldn't you take, you know, the community want ads and other advertisements, advertisements for? Uh, vehicles comparable to the one you had or the one you want to replace it with and make a, make a sort of composite of that and come up with a, a, a fair deal. I think the problem with that is those are asking prices. Those aren't what people are paying for them. Those are only asking prices. Well, well let me ask you though, even if they're asking prices, it could still be replacement. <coughs> what about That's what they're going to be asking when I go to buy the well, What about hearsay though? <laughs> I mean, you're saying, okay, so I, right, because Newspapers are here to say, the sources you've got have some problems with proof as you start to think about it. And, and that's what I want you to start to, to make that next push, is to just take the abstract, try to figure out, well, so what would it be? Do I need to hire an expert? Because an expert's going to cost you, I don't know, grand. What, so, I can, so you can lay the foundation to say, I buy and sell cars, I... Uh, Regularly go to the auction. I know the market. By the way, is it auction price or is it retail price? Replacement value for her would be retail because she's retail customer. Well, retail. Okay, but you already said retail private party, not retail dealer, and that's a that's a big difference, right? So, I mean, I thought he's entitled to be put back in the position he was, but for this wrong. Mm -hmm. So why would that not include potential dealer sales if that's where he has to buy the vehicle? This is where I found it. I went to, I went to Kelly Jeep. Kelly Jeep has the 2005 Jeep Liberty for 5,000 bucks. That's what I lost, that's what I want, that's what I'm gonna buy. Why isn't that some measure of his damage? A measure. How, how do we get that into evidence? <coughs> can, can he go to Ashco talk? <coughs> I went to Kelly Jeep. Investigated what the market value would be in order to replace mine. They have a Jeep on the, on the premises, five thousand dollars. What do you think the value of your Jeep was? Five thousand dollars. Can a person testify to the value of their own things? None. Of, half of you don't even know what the value of your car is worth. Absolutely. Do you know what the value of your pocketbooks are worth? Yes. So you know the value of your pocketbooks, <laughs> but you do not, and I'll, you didn't answer, but I'll bet you wrong too, Rachel. But, but you don't know the value of your motor vehicle. I know the value of my vehicle. You value your shoes as well. You saw my car, I wouldn't know how I haven't seen your car. My big high top black van out there, you can't miss it. But I wouldn't know how much it is. I know how much to pay for it. Do you, what about your houses? Do you know the market value of your houses or your apartments? I assume you do because you must pay that rent or. Yes. Sunshine, no, you're still looking at me like, no, I know I what I pay. Take care of this stuff for me. <laughs> I know what I pay, but yeah, my husband takes care of this. <laughs> um, well, if you had to guess, it would simply be a guess. Well, knowing what the amount of miles is on my truck, the type of work that I put into it, making sure that I maintain my, my Jeep at the required time. lost that cheap, would you be able to sufficiently educate yourself that you might be able to go into court and provide a basis for what your loss is? <clears throat> would that be acceptable method of, an acceptable method of proving losses? Because remember, generally a person can't give an opinion, but that's what she's doing, isn't she? Opinion is to value. Do you know what your own things are worth as a general matter? Let's take a look at this first case, and we'll come back. We'll come back to the same question because I got other more difficult questions for you as well. But I, when you start to look at these, I want you to start to think about. Okay, so so what does that mean? Because here we've got this stress electric case versus Blazer Lakeside Industries, and it's a it's a real estate uh, loss here. Um, 
And so, um, what's the, wh how do we prove the value of real estate that has been damaged? Here, what, what was it, a fire? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, there was this fire last week in Lawrence, um, and they should have had the hydrants working mm -hmm. better, first of all. Um, Huh? Well, no, I think it's the Chicago Fire. I saw it just the same week. They were testing the hydrants out there. I don't know why our city of Lawrence wasn't testing their own hydrants. Uh, because, at any rate, due to insufficient water pressure, uh, the house is virtual. I mean, like, I haven't seen houses burn like that. Did you see it? I mean, really, it's like gone. Like, like I don't know how long they could have been burning to, to be like that. Um, I mean, seriously, it's been a long time since yeah. I've so seen you know, a fire burn that, like, you know. Anyway, it was two of them. Three houses, two of them burned down to nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. They could they, they must have been incredibly engulfed with no water for a long time. But at any rate, houses in Old Lawrence are worth less than houses in Andrew. Right? There, I think. So, for those two houses that are completely burned down, what's the what's the value of the loss? Because I would I would guarantee you the replacement cost to go rebuild those houses is significantly more than market value. Significant. You know these uh, where I grew up too. We have these large Victorian homes, but the neighborhood is bad. So. You could, you actually economically to replace those homes could be, I don't even know how much money some of those places would. You know, the type of ornate woodwork that you just don't see anymore because of the, both the craftsmanship and cost. Um, market value is 100. Cost to replace is three. What's their loss? How do you value what the loss is? Because that's, that's what you've got to introduce is the value of that loss. So, how do we do it? According to this case, it says market value before and after the damage. Okay, but so if it's market value before, let's just take this situation. Market value of the house before is a is a hundred. Mm -hmm. The market value after, you've got an empty lot of land in Lawrence. I don't know, ten grand, we'll say. Loss is ninety thousand. That's it. Is, is, is that right? Well, there's another measurement they use. Right. What's the other measure? Um, uh, prove damages for loss of the home and contents based on replacement cost less depreciation method of valuation. Okay, so, so another method of valuing the loss to real estate is replacement cost less depreciation. But does it make a difference whether it is... Um, there's three, let me, let me just do it this way. Let me back up. There's three methods of valuing uh, real estate. Market value, right? What would you get if you put that on the open market in a reasonable sale? That's the market value. Gary's point, number two. Replacement cost, less depreciation. It's another way to value what the damages were. There's a third approach, it's not often used. It depends on when and what you use it, but there's a third legitimate approach, and oftentimes an appraiser, if you hire one, would provide all three. It's called the income approach. They would look to see if the that property was rented out, this is what it would receive based on that annual return, this is what it's worth as an income producing property. So there's three legitimate methods of valuing real estate. The problems also come in, though, when we're talking about and I think we saw these cases earlier, when we're talking about the difference between repairable and non-repairable property, right? If property is repairable, then as a general matter, we should repair it. And so it would be the cost to repair less depreciation would be a legitimate approach. However, when property is no longer repairable, that the damage is permanent and irreparable, then we have some real problems potentially because if the expense of repairs is more than the market value 
there's a significant <laughs> legitimate argument to be made that repairing it at this point is an e economic waste. Right? Let's take our problem that we're working with. If you give me $300,000 to fix that house, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to buy three. And now I've got three properties worth what I lost. Well, that's not being made whole. That's a windfall. So on the other hand, though, what if that's my home? That's my family home. I understand you're saying, well, it's all fungible. I could live on another street in another neighborhood in another town, but it's not, right? Some people have lived in their homes all their lives. Some of you may have parents like that. We're not going anywhere. This is where we're going to die. So moving could be traumatic. How do we how do we do that though? Because here they did in fact bring an expert in, um, and experts can offer their opinion. Those of us that have had evidence understand that, as a general matter, lay witnesses can't offer their opinion unless it's one of the five S's: speech, speed, signature, sobriety, or sanity. So anytime someone's going to tell us what they think, an opinion is what someone thinks, right? What the value is that's what they think, then they have to be qualified as an expert. In order to be qualified as an expert, they have to possess background, education, education experience, experience and training, training, right? They have to be beat, beat, beat. right? B-E-E-T. Um, and, and, and it's relatively easy to, to get a real estate appraiser who will fit that, those qualifications. But this is going to cost you some money. Because they're going to have to do a market analysis. They're going to they're going to actually show you comparables. It's actually it's a it's a pretty decent piece of work. That when you look at it, you say, okay, that that's probably within a reasonable range. And that's the other part of this, right? When we're establishing damages, it's not certainty. You can never establish anything in this life with certainty. It's more likely than not is that the measure of the damages. So we don't have to get to well, that's for sure, because even with real estate, which is probably one of the relatively easiest things to value. Um, it's never going to be perfect conditions, perfect matches to houses and the like. Um, you know, my guess is you probably can get pretty close on condos and especially larger developments where you find a few comparables and they're virtually identical units. But for houses, it becomes a little more of a uh, challenge because simply the neighborhood's different, the location's different, the houses are different. Um, but, but the expert can come in and testify. The problem is the expert's going to cost us money. So now we get back to our problem um, with, well, are there other ways to do it? What evidence would be acceptable? Um, this, this case, and there's a couple questions I want to ask you as we go through this case. Uh, it's, a, it's a products liability case, bad stove, caused the fire. Uh, it says here that um, they're appealing from an order granting defendant's motion for a directed verdict. What's that? What's a direct motion for a directed verdict? Hmm. So the judge instructs the jury um, <coughs> that they have to find it a certain manner. Yes, why? Say what? So Plaza versus Lakeside Industries, uh, it was a motion for a directed verdict. It does vast bypass the jury. But, but what does that mean? Because as we try to value damages, here what the defendant's saying in this case is the plaintiff hasn't really introduced sufficient evidence to prove their damages. To what? What's a directed verdict test? To test the evidence, as you have told me. What's the standard for allowing a motion for a directed verdict? No reasonable jury would find based on the evidence submitted for the other side, right? You're testing the sufficiency of the evidence to see 
And what they were saying here is there was insufficient evidence of what the loss was in this case. Um, so, so tell me, tell me that. The, tell me about this, these measures of loss that we look at for real estate. We said market value would be a fair approach. We said replacement cost less depreciation would be a fair approach. Which, by the way, that will leave the person short of being able to fix their home, won't it? Because they had a depreciated house. Now maybe the period of depreciation will be 30 years, so to, to some extent it might be not a lot of depreciation, but any depreciation is going to leave me out of pocket. And then the last approach that isn't always used but is available to be used is an income approach. If this property was rented out, this is what it is. Here they want to use, uh, is it a straight market value or replacement cost less depreciation? Market value before and after, however, if the injury is repaired, the expense of repairs is less than the market value. The measure of damage is the cost of repairs. So I guess I'm still, and it says replacement cost alone without any deduction for depreciation is not sufficient evidence of market value, right? And where this one saying, thus under the above stated rule, which is the, the rule on the first page decision, the measure of damages is the market value of the real and personal property at the time the fire occurred. So an old couch, an old house, whatever that market value is. So these people in Lawrence with the fires last week, they get, if the value of that house was $100,000, they get the hundred thousand dollars less the value of the lot. We'll call it ten. They get ninety, even though they will never be able to rebuild that home with ninety thousand dollars because of the cost of lumber, the cost of the contractors, the uh, uh, <coughs> cost of maybe the additional design or whatever. They're going to move, even though the fire may have been no cause of their own, and someone else might be responsible. They cap them. They cap, their damages will cap at market value as opposed to replacement costs, less depreciation if that would gross, if that would exceed market value. But isn't it commonplace to insure your property for greater than what it's worth to, to account for that kind of Well, you can situation? actually, you can insure your, um, pro you can insure your property for uh, full replacement cost. Uh, you gotta make sure you do. Um, because if not, you're not insured for that. You're insured for market value, and that may well be less, or replacement costs, less depreciation, which even if a house is 20 years old, it's not really old by house, house ways, uh, but you're gonna have a significant amount of depreciation taken out of that. But here's what you guys have to be careful about as well. There's a tendency to say, well, we can insure over it. When we're doing civil cases, there is, that insurance company isn't ours. We don't have them procured the insurance. The only way they're going to kick in is if you establish liability of the defendant and can establish damages against the defendant, meaning proving your loss. And so if you can't prove your loss, you come up with nothing. Um, and, and I guess that's what I want us to start with is what I think is a relatively easy approach on real estate. By the way, is your tax assessment is that some evidence of value? Because it doesn't, most cities and towns, don't they assess the value of your real estate? They, by the way, they also assess the value of your mass. We assess the value of your motor vehicle too, don't we? Yeah. I'm not sure you want that. But it's not, that's not typically based on replacement costs. It's, there's a lot of politics going on. Well, it's not gonna be based on replacement costs, but it's supposed to be based on market value, isn't it? supposed to be but it's not and, it, and it's well known that it's not that's why I think case precedent is more accurate here. well is that true well I think ass assessments and you go from one well, wait a minute, hold on stop you keep going with this case precedence that's someone else's case okay that's someone else's case someone else's house someone else's injuries that helps give us a an idea of worth as the lawyer do not think that that establishes the market value or your loss in your case. Because at the end of the day, your loss, 
your market value is based on the evidence you present at trial. And, and so you've got to be really careful of that because we look at cases, and especially if you think about it, a lot of times people will break their ankle, okay? We could go around this room here and the same right ankle is going to uh, vary dramatically in value for just the people sitting around this table. Okay, so that's the way it is. And even for those of you within a closer age range, some are more active than others, some more miles on the wheels, some even though you're the same age, who knows? Yeah, you're, you're, right? mis you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. I'm not saying to establish the value for that particular entity that's in, ca in the case. I'm saying that you use case precedent to see what the standards are, what they use. Here they use replacement value, less depreciation. That's where you get the case precedent. And then you're going to see things where people have tried to bring into court well, so the tax me, assessment stop. and so it was either worked or it didn't. It doesn't. Okay, but so tell me why, how you're going to establish your replacement cost. And, and also tell me why your assessment isn't some evidence of that value. So, because if I'm the insurance company and your town uses full assessment, full, it's supposed to be 100% replay, uh, value, and your value is 300, I'm saying that's some evidence. And uh, until you give us others that are more reliable, it, well, why isn't that some evidence of value? It could be, and if it's worked <coughs> in other cases, then you can use it. But don't you think it would? Don't, what does the assessor's office do? Assess the value of, go ahead. That's what I was going to say earlier. Is, uh, I think from town to town it varies wildly, and I think that the, how often they update the assessments, sometimes it doesn't keep up with what the economy is doing. I've got a friend, his, his house is assessed for like 180000 higher than what he could even come close to getting. I'm under-assessed, I'm okay with that right now. No, no, but, but that's right. It depends on how, they're supposed to do it every three years. It depends on how often they do. Depends on when you last bought or sold it. It's either going to be high or low, depending because we've had dramatic swings like that within the last few years in the real estate in, in Massachusetts. Well, and all throughout all New England, especially. Um, but but I guess I'm wondering why that's uh, to, uh, in some ways I'm hearing that's no proof of value. Really? Why isn't it some? It may not be one you like. If it's a current assessment, I think it's... What's that mean, current assessment? If it was done that calendar year or that fiscal year. So last year's value is no indication of this year's value. I mean, the way the economy has been, it's... And then, and then I, you I, agree, I agree we have arguments, but I think that some... I think you've got to be realistic that, that that is likely some value at some point in time. But if you've got an argument that, no, within the last year, house prices have dropped 10% again or increased 15%. And, and, and also your argument about some towns are more uh, uh, zealous about making sure that it does reflect actual value where others, the uh, house hasn't been bought or sold in a long time, it may well reflect a, a fairly outdated value. And how about a house that's sold, that it's historical? You know, how do you, how do you? Uh, well, would that, would that be reflected in its market value? Yes. Some people want older houses, some people do not. I mean, do you get a premium because it's just old? That's, do you? I mean, what is this it's, it's, it's a, I don't call it whatever you want, but it, it frankly, Lincoln slept in. <laughs> is that, is that, is that so does he get a premium when his house that Lincoln slept in burns? Does he? I mean, I would see him, that'd be pretty impressive. Is that, or is it just market value? I think you think what? You think, what, you're going to give me a little extra money because Lincoln's up there? Well, or, is that, or should that be reflected naturally in market value? I think likely it's going to happen, especially if the home What's going to happen? It's historical. It will, you will get more money. You'll get more market value. Um, so market value, even if Lincoln's up there, market value is market value. Whatever, the, whatever that is. I'm saying I think that you'll get more money because Lincoln's up there. Okay, but wait a minute, though. More <laughs> money than market value or yes. market value more will money. reflect the added value that Lincoln slept in. More money than market value. More money than market value. Because sometimes the market's climbing, sometimes it's, so this says, this says just says depreciation, but sometimes the market's appreciating. So it should be fair market value and take appreciation into consideration too. So you might be adding value. So it's not just depreciation. Sometimes the real estate market's appreciating. 
Sometimes it's depreciated. It's a, it depends on the market. No, no, okay, but here, you're, you're, now you've mixed, I think you've mixed. So if you bought a house at 100,000, it's now worth 200. That's market value, right? 200 is market value. Yeah. But when we're saying that's replacement cost, no, 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 when they say replacement cost less depreciation, yeah. they're not saying, you know, instead of appreciation, it's a different approach. We're saying replacement cost. What, is the, what are the contractor's cost? What's the lumber cost? What's whatever design cost? What's the actual physical replacement cost entailed? And then less depreciation. You don't get new windows. You got to depreciate what it is you had because you don't you didn't have a brand new house. So use of it. The, well, the, not just the use of it. The 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 fact is that your oil burner is now 20 years old. That your windows now are, are not Anderson new thermopane windows. They're 20 year old windows. That's what we're saying is that you don't get a brand new house. You get if you're going to go replacement method, it's replacement less depreciation. And and that's that's where that's where we have some worries as to how we go about it. I have some worries when we're saying, well, we're going to make a distinction also between um, houses that are completely destroyed and houses that are repairable. Because what if the house does bear these additional attachments to it? Lincoln slept there, or maybe not Lincoln, maybe to, to the homeowner, my grandmother was born in that house. We've lived there all of these years. Our family celebrated our holidays here all the time. This is our home, right? And there are people, and especially I think older people, who that's, they don't, they're not leaving. And now, so so now now you're going to say, well, you are. If you if potentially, you don't get you don't get replacement costs, less depreciation. You don't get market value. Well, you may get market value, but that market value is not going to be a sufficient amount of money to to replace the actual house. Why not sentimental? Well, what about I mean, can you or is that because that, that's what I saw just just started hearing as well. Lincoln slept there. That's of some value. Is that, and so that's a value everyone would share that Lincoln slept there, or no, my grandmother was born there. I was raised there. So, so I can collect for that? And collect what? That's, that's part of, that's over and above replacement cost, less depreciation? The next, the, the next case gets into that. Okay, let's talk about the next case. Because I'm, I just, before we do though, it says the general principle is that proof of the, this is on 314, proof of the amount of damages may not be founded on mere conjecture or speculation, but mathematical certainty is not required. That's the Wolverine Green case. Think about that, right? We can never, we're never going to get certain, but you do have to establish that value. More likely than not, that's the value of your loss. You know, real estate, we've got a variety of ways. We have the same thing with the car, if you think about it. If the car was burned, but we can fix it, then let's fix it. Less depreciation, not new tires, whatever, right? But if it's totally destroyed, we're looking at market value. Because no one would say, uh, listen, I want you to repair my, what do we use, 2005 Jeep. Um, even if it costs $40,000 to repair, when we know the market value is somewhere around 10 or whatever it is, right? And so the same rule is when we start to look at it, but I have a little trouble with, with real estate in, in applying that principle as opposed to a vehicle. Okay, you don't live there. Your families didn't celebrate certain holidays there. It doesn't have that, not just emotional attachment, but personal attachment, value. Depends on the car. I think it depends <laughs> on the car. I'm gonna use mine as an example. Mine is for my handicapped son. My car burns, I have nothing. And the car costs a lot of money to make. The van costs a lot of money to... Well, if my car burns, I have nothing. Yeah. Well, how is your, how, why is your market different than mine? Well, like I said, okay. I don't think... I'm talking about the value, to value the, the... What year is it? Huh? What year is it? 2007. Okay, so it's five years old, six years old. Right. And it's $40,000 right. to convert it. Oh, to just convert. Yes. Okay, but suppose suppose Kelly burns it down. <laughs> Shoot her. <laughs> but it still may, it still it still might be cheaper to buy a new one 
and retrofit it than to try and fix one that she has yes. burned oh, yeah. so bad. I agree, but I'm saying as far as it wouldn't be just market value, wouldn't it be more than market value for that type of vehicle? That's what I'm asking. Oh, the market value, no, the market value says, the approach says you're entitled to get a 2006, 2007, though it was high point, <laughs> yeah. with all with the equipment you had in it, yeah. but no more. Even though it sounds personal and valued, valued by you, huh? That's terrible. No, but, but, well, but that, what is that? What mental suffering? Does she for the loss of her vehicle? Because no, seriously, because the guy gets us into Thursday's ex talks. Thursday's exercise about the sheep. And my, my little dog, Scout, too, who we'll talk about. My son will suffer not having And his favorite point. teddy bear was um, Okay, but so do you get, do you get, do you get emotional distress, personal damages for loss of your personal property? Because I love this tape recorder. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> but if something happens to this tape recorder, it doesn't make a difference how much I love it. Doesn't make a difference how much you love that van of yours, does it? I don't think it's so much as how much she loves the van, right. but it's more of, if anyone in here loses their car, we go to the lot and we can drive one off. Right. They don't have these particular vehicles in stock, I'm guessing. No, so you have not to pay for, for the a type conversion. of vehicle we need, correct. So how long did it take them to retrofit the vehicle? Six months. Really? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so she's got six months of substitute transportation costs. Do they rent these vehicles as well? No. Oh, please. Honest to God, they do not. They don't. Honest to God, they don't. We had to, when we I it happened find to us, one. <laughs> no, I will not find one big enough for my son. I guarantee you. I could, I could wage you what you will never. For the condition that he has, we're taking fast people. Not. <laughs> we're not, because it's contingent upon the condition. Well, I, I need to see the Batmobile, obviously. You have to see that. Yes, you do. <laughs> because it's a one of a kind item that takes six months to get. I'm, I'm going to tell you yes. Okay, then we're going to go look at and it. And I wouldn't someday. say one of a kind. <laughs> It's just that the condition yeah, that yeah. it has is very rare in this area. So no person... But what special features does it have that makes it that unique? The size. But it's just size. big. No? It's, it's big, yes. I'm going to have to look at it because I don't... I, I don't understand why it would take six months to put it together. That's a long time. You call right away and find out. I have no idea. Oh, that's a, it's a company that makes this? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Because we had a van prior to this one. They, and they did, there's no use market? No. What happens is for this type of condition that he has, yeah. you buy a conversion van, any conversion van that you buy, his head will go, he'll have to bend his head this way. He can't because of his size. So like you have to. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to go and get this. It fitted. He actually has to get measured. He has to go for fittings three or four times. It's pretty horrific. It's personalized. Well, that's not Really, it's like personalized to Correct. him. For him, yes. Yes. And I mean, not for nothing. Every conversion. But so, wait, wait, wait. So, so, at the end of the day, okay, because I'm getting swept into this now, too. Yeah. It's still a market value, isn't it? I mean, because. How can you say that? Because, it's because it's isn't, that, isn't that the measure of. Extra. The, what? To market value the extras right. that she has to deal with. Well, whatever, whatever it is at the end of the day, but she's not going to get pain and suffering for the loss of a thing, but is she? But when you look at a no. market value, if you look up this van, the type of van, the name of van on your blue book or whatever, I don't understand all that crap, but anyway, if you look it all up, you're going to get the market value of it prior to the conversion. No, no, we're all agreeing you get yeah. the value of what your loss is, which is a fully converted van yeah. that is equivalent to what your loss is. But that's what but I'm saying. You don't How get do you do that? You're going to look at market value, but that's not what I, I want. I want. No, we're going to go to right away and say, this is what we need. What's that vehicle going to cost us? And, and that's your loss, right? Right. And you look at what she paid to put into it for features, too. Well, that's what, well, right away. That, that's what right away we're going to say. Give us this vehicle. Will they buy a vehicle for you as well and, and retrofit it? No, we have to purchase it and then they send it down for retrofit. Okay, so she's got two measures of damages. The, the actual... 2007 vehicle right. plus the retrofit. And depreciation though, right? Yeah, I know, that's what I was just thinking too, right? It's not, she's not, you're not getting, you're gonna be out of pocket if something happens to that van. <laughs> that's why you insure it. I get that. That's that's right, depends, sure. yeah, you should check and make sure you've got full replacement cost coverage on we that do. vehicle because, because you're right, because she's got, what, six-year-old 
wear upgrades and wear, wear and tear, tear that that you may not I mean you that would cost probably double what you you they may well give you to get the upgrades to your specs specifications. Uh, but let me finish this because I want to get to the next case too. Um, then they talk about one way to put this information is is through the experts um, and the like. Uh, which expert? Listen, I don't want to minimize using experts to prove value. Here's the problem: our clients don't always have this type of money. Okay, when we talk, you know, for those of you that had, that we had evidence together, it's easy to say just get an expert. Okay, that money comes from somewhere. And oftentimes your clients do not have it. And if your clients do not have it, that means that's another item that you're putting up on the table here. Um, and so you've got to think about, well, how would I prove it if I didn't have an expert? And that's what I'm asking you to start to think about is, well, what type of testimony is accepts, acceptable? What types of information could I come in? I mean, Pat said, well, maybe we could sort of say that the Blue Book is a, a market records and reports. Maybe it is, I'm not so sure it is. Uh, but again, so I'm going to have to lay a foundation if that in fact is true before I can get it get it introduced. I can't just take the, the damn book and put it into evidence. Someone has to be the vehicle for putting it in and establishing that foundation. And and you need to start to think about that, right? I mean, I need you as part of this course to think about not just okay, you know, giving me the language that was acceptable in first year SIP Pro as well. We're going to make them whole. We're going to put them back in the position that would have been but for the the wrong done to them. What's that mean as we, we approach the end of our law school career? I know you can spit back the language. As a practical matter, what does that mean for introducing testimony and evidence? And what would that look like in the real world? The next case is this Campins versus Capels case. Uh, he just simply wants the value of um, these uh, rings um, that were taken from him. I've got some items that I want you to value as well. Uh, I've got baseball, two baseballs actually, see there's one baseball. I'll explain that story in a minute. I have another baseball. <laughs> I have a photograph. One of my best days ever. See that? That's my two boys when they were obviously much littler. Uh, uh, down in Florida, we were down for spring training. And they got, as you can see, the, the someone in the picture with the pen. That's Tony La Russa. You know what his claim to fame was for the longest time? The only manager in the major leagues who is a lawyer. He was a lawyer. Uh, that, that's the ball he signed right there from spring training. That, but seriously, like, absolute, maybe top five days of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> you have the uh, certificate of the certificate of authenticity is Tony signing the ball right there, and whoever this lady who creeped into my picture is, she is not related to any of us. Okay? <laughs> but she got in the picture. That's that is that ball. This ball. Uh, how many of you have ever uh, gone to a baseball game? How many of you have ever uh, tried to catch a baseball at a baseball game? And how many of you have ever caught a baseball at a baseball game? The real one, the, like a Braves or something? It was not, it not was, like Georgia State or something. No, like no, no. It was, I mean, the minor league. Another bounce? Uh, the Green Jackets, which there's a couple of girls. the Green Jackets. No. That's what they are. Okay, so here's my point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I caught that ball. Okay. Without a bounce? No, without a bounce. It hit, well, it did hit the upper deck on the right and then bounced. So yes, so that's correct. correct. Without a problem. How true. many kids did you take out trying to get it? <laughs> <laughs> I broke a good pair of sunglasses. Okay? <laughs> no. Okay. At any rate, here's the question. Well, actually, that's not the entire question. Now, that is for now. Um, how much are these worth? Priceless. Priceless. Yes, they are priceless. priceless. I would not sell this ball. I would not sell either of those. So, so, but you know what? Sunshine stole them from me. She heard about this. She heard about the great day. Sunshine had stolen these things from me, and so we need to sue her and, and get that um, get. Well, and, and she was so upset she threw them into the Boston Harbor. So they're forever lost. I want to get money from her. How much? Wow. You gotta go to the market. 
So what market? What do you mean? Is there a market for balls in my car? There's no market for the foul ball. It's a black market. You always like that black. Well, I've seen, I've, I've seen them. You've all seen them now. And other people have seen them in years preceding this. So they, and they, some of them know and remember the story. So I want to know what they were. The collectibles market. They are, well, just the collectibles market? So is, I mean, is that what, how would you establish the value of this? I mean, <laughs> stars is that the one with less or is that the other one? That's, that's the one with uh, that's hardcore. You just, e you just email them. The uh, so no, seriously, how would you establish the market? But I, I, have, I have one more item in my bag of tricks here. My Google's bag of tricks. Um, those are rosary beads. So Sunshine decided to take those for me too. Uh, and those have, those have, uh, those have special Healing, healing, not just sentimental healing powers. Yeah. I can tell you various stories. You look at me like I'm crazier than you are or anything. <laughs> I think I am. But trust me, I would. These are wooden beads, but I would not sell them. Where are I, they from? I might give you a bit. Medjugorje, ah, nice. which which is the the last place that the uh, Blessed Mother was allegedly seen in. Not allegedly mm -hmm. seen in. So they're very special, and they. I can tell you. I can seriously. I have told this story at other times and people have emailed me or told me uh, they understand that these, by the way, these were not always this color. They have turned lighter in color over time. Now, some would say, well, that's good. You keep them on your desk and near the window and everything gets awful bright in there. But here's my question. How much are they worth? How are you going to establish the market value? And is this, this just like religious items don't have a market value? Well, I know, Sandy. Starts out. Help me out with this, Sandy. Isn't it what somebody's willing to pay? So you have to look at the collector's items to see how good he's pitching now. And unfortunately, well, he's not pitching. He's a, he's a manager. Yeah. Oh, if he's even after his last DUI now. arrest, he I think he retired. DUI arrest. <laughs> no, he's still he's still one of the greatest managers ever. I'll bet he still goes in the Hall of Fame. He may already be in. But it's but it's not just that. It's it's this. How many baseballs did he sign? <laughs> Didn't sign many that day, and I'll tell you, these the, these two little guys fought for this. I was worried that some of the older people there were going to break a hip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Ooh, oh my God, because it's these two with about eight, I hear one of nine the year old people. Of the necklace. Say what? You should at least share one of the stories, because wouldn't you have to share one of the stories with the jury to, to say? Oh, I could share it. Well, because, you know why? Because I think people get funky when you start to talk religion and law school. So, I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you. No, the experience, yeah, the story. What I can tell you one of the professors, children here was very, very ill when she was born, very small, and I had given him, I had three of them. One of my friends took them back from Medjugorje, he now lives in Hawaii, and he gave me three. And I gave that professor one, and that child, seriously, should, should not have lived. She did. My own daughter was very, very sick one time. Her blood counts were like crazy. We had no idea what was going on. Um, put that on her, you know, gave it to her, put it on her bed thing. And some, I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Because I could tell you, the, I, I don't even remember the counts, but I said, oh, my shit, we're going to go children's. And that's what their pediatrician said. You're going to need to see some special for this. Go back a week later, she gets tested again, gone. So there's a whole bunch of things other people have said, sir, uh, you know. Can I touch that before final? And by the way, I do I have I do sometimes when I know people have been sick and they come in and they talk to me, I do have kids I will give some away, oh, but I won't. I would not sell them, nor would I It's but, green ones, you can forget them. Yeah, you can buy them from eBay. He's got the how much are they now? Okay, he's got the wooden beads from eBay. Seven ninety nine. So free shipping. Free shipping. There you go. <laughs> so is that is that the market value? Seven ninety nine. The value of a baseball, like a major league baseball. This one and it says major league. It says major league on it, right? Major league baseball is twelve fifteen bucks if you want to go to Twins across the street from Family Park. Is that all it is? Because because no. Fred, Fred, I just did this. I'm the only one in the room who's caught the ball at Family Park in this room, right? No, really, right? Yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, we all tried. 
I'm the only one there. No, so so that must be more than twelve or fifteen dollars. That's my question. And the Tony La Russa ball is that just is that just? And you can check this out for us. What does an autograph Tony La Russa ball go for? Is that all it is? Is that it's just it's whatever that is, or it's everything like this that goes into it? Yes. Is that a market, or is this is this from Campins versus Capels? Is this what they call mawkish sentimental value? You know, listen, you get. Twelve bucks for a baseball. What did Tony La Russa? Ninety-eight ninety-nine. What's that? A Walmart? Walmart. Oh, God, really? <laughs> and so would be my ball. Uh, the the foul ball. Well, the whatever was it? A home run? No, it was a foul ball. Who hit it? Um, my recollection is it was the second baseman who, like a week later. Um, I forget who it was, but the guy from Baltimore, like either hit him with a bat, or uh, I forget. I forget the whole story now because it was a number of years ago. But so, but it wasn't. He was no one really. Not not. It's not Cal Bernie Cabo before he <laughs> hit it out of the center field and we won that game. It was it was no one at the end of the day. Who are they playing against? Um, the Yankees or anybody? See, see, here's your Baltimore. It wasn't about them. It never really is, is it? No, it's, it's about me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't make a difference who hit it or what the team was. It was about catching the ball. Well, I don't know if it was well, yeah, Barry Bonds. Bonds. Was ball. No, it wasn't Bobby Bonds. Bonds. There was no one. It was no one. It was no one. So, so tell me how you prove value because we've got this case and it's the value. Of, oh, so Tony La Russa's market value at Walmart is ninety nine dollars. A regular baseball, Major League Baseball, will be 12 or 15 bucks. The Rosary Beats he's found for $7.99 on eBay. So that's it? Or, well, Sandy, how much would you give me for the Rosary Beats? You looked, uh, how much would you, no, no, it, how much would you say if you were sitting on a jury? And I, and I, I have more stories, by the way, but I'm not going to go down the line. Uh, how much are they worth if Sandy took them and burned them on? Just for spite. Not saving sunshine. She knows. She knew. Oh, she knew I would what never, I though. I would never. But go ahead. Then. So you say. But I don't have my baseball bat. He's going no. I don't know. I don't know how I can value him, but I know that it's more than 12, whatever yes. you just said. Seven, seven, you said the, uh, yeah, seven, eight, eight bucks, 12, 100. There has to be sentimental value, like this case says, added into it. But can you? I thought we couldn't, because you could tell me, you could say, well, this, this Aquafina bottle I have here, it's, was very it's attached to it. It's priceless, <laughs> right? I mean, and that is what we worry about: is people cheating here, right? Yeah. Kelly's Gap sweatshirt. You know what? This is my favorite sweatshirt. Well, I guess in this case, the rings they said you couldn't buy on the market or something. Correct? Did they not say that? Well, I think they were saying there's no uh, market really for these types of championship jewelry, although we could replace them by, you know, recasting them and using the gold and all the rest. of it. So, so is that what it is? If there is a market, you take market, even though market, the value of these things, and seriously, the value of these things, but is it just sentiment or, or just, sen what does sentiment mean? Does that mean it's just to you? Or that, or what if there, if there's a market that others would accept? Let's, like let's, like isn't, yeah, isn't there a market that others would accept for the value of religious items of, uh, strong value to you. Is there? Or no? At the end of the day, no. No. Those pictures of, uh, well, whatever you have. Yellow? They're not yellows, right? I go to flea market, I've seen those little pictures of Jesus you probably saw when we were little, you know, with the crown, you know, the dock. You can go to the flea market and probably grab one tomorrow, right? Right. But, but, it, but that was in my house when we were little. So is that, does that just go get it at the flea market? Or when Sandy burns that, I mean, too, is there a value? Is there a value of items for which the market doesn't reflect the true value? Yes. So, 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 so how do we establish it then in a civil case? How do we establish the value of these items or say the value is not what the market would pay because there's an additional value to that item? Yeah, I can go get another Major League Baseball for 12, 15 bucks. It will not be the one I caught. So that's not going to make me whole. Maybe $5,000. <laughs>
No, go ahead. Well, I mean, same in the last case. You're going to put it in front of a jury or a judge, and there's a certain amount of discretion, but then the other side's going to have their say, too. The, the, the other counsel is going to say, in the last case, he's going to say, you're using the wrong expert, using the wrong source for your, your pricing of the house or whatever. So there's, there's a, that's why we go to court, so we can both sides will argue it out. You'll argue your case in front of the jury, and they'll decide how much it's worth to you. Well, but I also have to get past the, the, the directed verdict question, right? I mean, so it's not just I can say what it's worth, but if I put a value on it that is not sustainable, what did they give uh, him for the rings? Because a thousand. A thousand. And what was the actual market value or the component value? Was it 600? 750. 750. So they gave him a little bit for the trophy value, yeah. but a third. So for my call it $16 ball, I get another third, well say 15 and five. So I get 20. 20, 20 is not gonna make it whole. I've been going to baseball, Fenway Park all my life. Do you know how much money I spent trying to catch that ball? <laughs> Do I get the tickets back? Do I get all that money? All the times I went? Can I, is that a value measure? No? No, because you're not returning the experience. No, I'm not. You're <laughs> absolutely right, Ash, I'm not. So it's so so this is going to cap out at twenty bucks because that doesn't. Be, I'm not kidding. That I would feel a significant loss at twenty bucks, but but maybe maybe twenty five hundred. I would feel better than twenty five hundred. Because I'm not even hearing. I'm likely to get a thousand if we sort of use Campins versus Capels as some guy because it it's got to be representative of market, or maybe we'll give you a, a premium, but it's not going to be tenfold. Same thing for the religious items? Or religious items go in a different category from our sporting, you know, sort of our antiquated attachment to baseball. That's different. That's, that's beer in summertime. This is <laughs> life and death. What, what about that? Is that, is that different? So, isn't it? Like, you know, I think I think sometimes, like, my mother had a little uh, prayer book. You know, her novena, I think she called it my novena. I don't know whether it had the novena in it or what, but she had a little book, prayer book, right? That's, that's what? Replacement cost, less appreciation. Honest to God, that's the next zero at that point, right? Because she had it, I remember, all her life. So there's no, nothing left by the time Sunshine takes that and burns it off. Oh, yeah. Well, but wait a minute, though. I thought the case specifically says you cannot get get damages for only sentimental value. Doesn't it? Because because I, I I think that I think don't religious items go in a different category or not? No one's willing to join in with me on this. I would say you I don't have. Oh, go ahead. I would say you'd want to, if it's a jury trial or a judge, you're trying to get the judge, you're, you're going to want to get a sports nut in, in the jury or the judge. In that case, in this case, you're going to try to find religious people. But isn't the sports not going to say, listen, it's a hundred dollar ball. Go over to the place in Everett. What's the name of the place? I'm not, a, I'm not a baseball fan. If you got a judge that's a baseball fan, he's going to have more sentiment than I would. I think I might like Sandy. Sandy. Do you a yeah. baseball fan, Sandy? Not at all. Yeah, I think I'd take Sandy instead of the baseball. Baseball camp's going to say, get over it. It's not, you guys already asked, not Mike McGuire, right? Mike McGuire didn't hit it, did he? You know, it wasn't Barry Bonds. I think I'll take Sandy. I think I'll try to appeal to Sandy's heart. Is that okay or not? Because I thought the case sort of says that's not what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Aren't there some items, and I'm specifically thinking about the religious ones, but I do like my ball that I caught at Fenway Park as well. Aren't there some items that their value greatly exceeds whatever market is, and that others would share that appreciation for. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Yes. So, as long as this is, I think, as long as I can accept, get others to accept that the market, that, that the value of this item greatly exceeds any purported market on eBay for beads, that, that I could collect for that, not that you can collect, but that you can show enough evidence. I again think it's finder of fact. 
So it would go to the jury. I think. Would it? I could get five thousand dollars for these beads that he finds if on he eBay for eight dollars. If you have enough evidence. <coughs> what do you mean enough evidence? What? And that's where we got, we're going to come full circle to where we started. What's the evidence? The Is stories you my tell. attachment. Your attachment to them. Yes. My personal attachment, or yes. do I have to get a couple of you guys to say, listen? I know it sounds uh, unique, Witness. not fun, it's unique. <laughs> but don't, seriously, I've had other people come up afterwards, someone may email me and say, listen, I know I know it sounds crazy, but I can, I, I, I have- I believe you completely. <laughs> I've been there, it's okay, go on. Okay, so, so I got two votes in the row. I'm yeah. not buying it. Um, well, but, but so does that, so that means that really all I need is four more people on that jury, like-minded like you, and we could be making some money here depending on the opposing counsel, because he's going to try to pick holes. In well, but aren't you going to pick holes, but aren't there items, and especially I'm thinking, as for, and, and this may be wrong, but I, well, I'll, I'll ask it generally because you're all younger, but aren't there especially, don't you guys have, you probably have older people in your family who religion means a lot more to them perhaps than it does to you, and they have items of cherished value that they've held for long term, that signify that. So, and many of us know people like that. So why isn't that establish a market? A market beyond the value, the commercial value to say, no, listen, sometimes these things will ex grossly exceed the, the sum of their parts. Why can't, can't I sell that? Because I'm not just trying to sell it. I think, I think there's a legitimate group like that. Have you ever seen some of these dog-eared Bibles that people have had for decades, or that they take to church on a regular basis. I have, you know, by the way, these beads, these are rosary beads, these are Catholic rosary beads, but I have all sorts of, people have brought me over time different beads, because beads are very common for all religions, so to some extent, they, they cross party lines here. Um, and I've got different types from, from different uh, religions and the like, and so beads are pretty, fairly common. Uh, religious artifact. Uh, well, but then doesn't that mean that they, they offer some value to people? Certainly offer comfort to people at times, right? So why is it, why can't that be? Why can't we establish a commercial basis for that? Well, we can. You think, but how? Because Kempins versus Capels quite clearly says, if all you're working on is sentimental value, you're not going to do much. Ash tells me, eBay says eight bucks. Maybe we'll give you 10, but we're certainly not going to give you more than 15. And honest to God, I would not, I would not, and I think many people would not, I wouldn't sell them for 100 bucks. I would sell them, I would not sell them for $1,000. I would not. Nope. 20? <laughs> no. No, 20? I don't think I would. Because I'm a, I'm a kind of a person too, okay? <laughs> I think, you know. I would, I would, I would be challenged as we get to five and north, thousand. And, and I know that sounds crazy, I but I'm telling that. you that's the God's honest truth. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure there is a price I would sell them at, and that is the truth. So, that's understandable. huh? That's understandable. You see what they've done, so why, why wouldn't that be? A thousand of my dying child's gonna get out. Uh, you don't need to, you don't need to give me the thousand. I'll give them to you for that, and that's the and, and, okay. Now that may be inconsistent, right? But but so what does that mean for value? I just want you to think about it because when we're looking at personal property, okay, listen. He found Walmart has Tony's ball for a hundred. The red, regular Major League Baseball is about fifteen bucks. He's found the beads on eBay. By the way, eBay establishes a market value. Or, or is that the ask or buy it now price? So that's that's some market as well. Isn't that an option site? Yeah, well it is, right? Could be or it could be a a regular retail site or auction. Um, is that is it what they sold at or what they asked for? We said before. That's hearsay too, isn't it? I saw it on eBay, someone was saying I'd sell it for this. Because frankly, I can put up eBay say say I'll sell it, you know, buy it now, price is $8,000. That doesn't necessarily establish a market value of you, does it? Think about it, because I need you to start to think about, okay, I'm going to be getting out of here in a month or a year.
how do we take the abstract notion of making someone whole and start to think about offering evidence of that? And how do we offer evidence when, at some point, it's somewhat inconsistent with the law, but the client feels legitimately that they have a better argument to make than what the law might provide them in the lead? No, it doesn't actually. No, it doesn't bother me at all, frankly, because, seriously, you, I, I would not sell that ball. This, you know, seriously, you know, how old are you? Okay, 25. I'm 56. Okay, when you get older, there at the end, of the, at the at, as you get older, across your lifetime, there may be five or ten days that you remember, maybe more, right? And for that to be one of the days, and that was really one of the best days ever we had. Um, it's just you know, that that memory is worth more than the ball. And the ball helps me do that sort of picture. And even without the ball of the picture, you could argue he's always going to remember that anyway. But I like my little trophies along the way. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 yes, we do. <laughs> that, that, well, I said this is not a buy, but why would you go to second? Maybe you go first. Beat? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.